Hi, this is Dr. Donald Pelto. I want to talk to you about proper treatment for ingrown toenails. This is a question that I get all the time by many patients, but as well at nail salons. They want to know how to properly uh, treat ingrown toenails. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to look at six different examples of ingrown toenails. Uh, here's example one. This is just one border with a little bit of redness. Example number two has a little white pocket here on the side. Uh, example three, it has both edges of the toenail involved. Example four just has a little bit of redness. And example five actually has an ingrowth of skin over the top. And then example six has an ingrowth of skin over the top of, of the whole thing on the sides, and as well the toenail can barely be seen. So by the end of this, hopefully you can understand a little bit how to treat ingrown toenails. Now I want to start out with, with telling you that really that this is not uh, supposed to uh, replace any medical evaluation. It's for educational purposes only. Uh, I do this for my patients, for different nail people that want to learn how to take care of ingrown toenails better, and even to more properly know when to send them to a specialist. Uh, I am Dr. Pelton, I'm a podiatrist, and I deal with ingrown toenails every day, so I'll, I'll tell you some pearls here. So let's go on, first of all, how not to treat an ingrown toenail. Uh, sometimes I see people coming in, uh, they have a little bit of uh, cotton underneath their toenail, uh, that really only works temporarily. Uh, it may work if it's not to the advanced state that we saw. You know, you don't want to use a, a, a match tip or something like that underneath. And and the other thing that people sometimes try to use is a um, an ingrown toenail pain reliever, like a medication that you put on the toenail. I try to avoid having people use that. And, and the main reason is because if you have diabetes, if you have poor blood flow, this can cause actually a sore or a wound on your toe that you may not be able to heal. So you have to be very careful. Uh, don't use any of these products. Uh, if you are if you see someone to get your nails done at a nail salon, be especially careful if you have thickening of the toenail uh, or if you have uh, diabetes or poor blood flow. You probably should see a specialist. So let's go on and, and look a little bit about the anatomy of the toenail. This is really important. If you, if you want to remove toenails, you need to understand the anatomy. I know it sounds really easy, but uh, I want to kind of help you understand the different parts of it. So first of all, you have the nail, which uh, just covers uh, the top of the, the nail uh, bed underneath it. Then you have the nail groove. Now, most people, they have a uh, little space here on both sides, and that nail kind of rides in the groove, and as it grows out, it, uh, it, um, it, it just grows out and you trim it. But some people, they tend to get a, a nail that kind of grows in the side here of this groove, and it can't get past the tip of it. And so what happens is the nail tends to grow out, tends to grow out, and there's a little callus that builds up here because it just can't get past the tip. But you also have something called the, the, the nail matrix, okay? You have something called the sterile nail matrix, which is kind of this blue area right here, and then you have the germinal na nail, ma nail matrix. That's actually where the, the nail grows from. So if, in any procedure that you want to remove the nail permanently and not have it grow back, you want to affect that nail matrix, okay? Um, also, be, be aware because right underneath the nail bed eh, is the bone. So you really don't want to affect the bone underneath it. The bone could get infected, and that's part of the reason we, we want to be seen by a professional, because if the toenail gets really bad, uh, the infection can get bad, and you can go down to the bone and cause a bone infection. Okay? Uh, a few other things about the, uh, the anatomy. You do have uh, you know, the, the nail plate, the cuticle, and other things around there. So let's kind of go on now and look at the instruments. Th these are important. If you're going to do nail surgery, you have to know the instruments that you have to use for it. So let's start um, by looking at it. The, the most important thing, really, is having something called a tourniquet or a tourniquet. This is actually this little green thing here. This is used to go around the toe, stop the blood flow. Makes it a lot easier to do toenail surgery if you have that. Uh, next is the spatula or the packer. This is used to kind of free up the nail edge. You kind of put it under the uh, border there after you numb it up and that can loosen it up. And then the English anvil is used to kind of cut all the way back underneath there. The hemostat, you pull it out. And then the nail, the tissue nipper, you um, remove any of the extra tissue around there. And these here, these uh, little nail um, cotton tip applicators, these are used to uh, put the phenol in it, if, should you need that, uh, to permanently kill the, the nail where it grows from. So uh, let's kind of continue on here. <clears throat> so. Let's, let's go through some treatment pearls, okay? Um, different pearls for treating ingrown toenails. First of all, let's start with toenail number one. So the first type of a toenail here, this is an infected toenail on the side. There's a little bit of redness. 
to me, the redness doesn't look bad enough to do an antibiotic. You really have to evaluate whether or not you need one. But you definitely need to get this whole edge out. So there's probably a piece of tissue in there or it somehow got infected in the edge. And this can be quite painful for patients. And what the, the procedure is, you numb up the toe, you put the little tourniquet around there, and you trim straight back, and you remove a portion of the nail there. And you kind of clean up any of this uh, bad tissue on the side. Okay, that's how you do the first one. Uh, the second one, it's a little bit different. It looks actually just like the tip of the toenail is kind of grown in the sun, and it's developed this little thing right here, uh, this little white, white aspect right here. This is called a pus pocket, and this can be drained pretty easily uh, in the office. So usually for this type, I'll, I'll tend to numb it up, but if you can just slant back a little side here, you can get that little portion out. But really be careful to make sure that there's no further infection in the back. And uh, when you do that, what's going to actually happen is uh, you're going to drain that pus pocket and you're going to see a little bit of pus come out. Make sure you get all that cleaned out. And then depending on how bad the pus is, you may need an antibiotic. Uh, next, we're going to kind of look at this ingrown toenail here. This is a, a bad one, uh, as we call bad, because it has both edges involved. It looks like the toenail is actually lifted. And uh, this has probably been there for a long, long time. Uh, usually people come in and they have had these for months, and this looks like one that's been kind of dealt with or not dealt with for months. Um, some people say, well, I just need an antibiotic and then it'll take care of it. Well, an antibiotic usually isn't enough. You need to have uh, some type of procedure to get these, these nail edges out that are bothering you to kind of clean up the skin. So that's what, what this shows here. Uh, this is a, a, a patient that we had to remove actually the whole toenail here. You can either remove both sides, but I would venture to say if you remove both sides here, after numbing it up and putting a tourniquet on, your, your nail's going to be very, you have a little thin piece in the center, so you probably want to remove the whole thing. Just wanted to show you another example here of, a, of another patient with one, once again, all this redness down here. Now, all this redness, this is infection. This would probably require an antibiotic, so that's what I would recommend for this patient. Here's another ingrown toenail that you may, may be more typical, uh, a little bit of redness right around the edge. Uh, this tends to be pretty painful, but just from the nail kind of going in the edge. Sometimes red trimming this out, you can, you can remove that. If you have the red here or the redness right here, there may be a little pus pocket underneath, so just be careful because you may get the same pus out uh, from there, and that, and that would mean you'd have to remove a little portion of the nail just to make sure it all drains out, and you can clear it up, and then, and then afterwards. So the treatment afterward is doing soaking once or twice a day or using a specialized um, product to uh, help ingrown toenail. Now, this is kind of a tricky one here. Uh, you can actually see that the skin has folded over the side of the nail. And, and what's happened here is the, the ingrown toenail has been there so long the skin's folded over because what happens is when you have a constant irritation of the skin, it produces a lot of blood flow to the area to try to heal it, and it actually produces a lot of swelling in there and a lot of extra skin, and that goes over the top of the nail. So for this, you have to numb the toe, put the little tourniquet on, remove a, a, sl a slit of it, but also kind of clean up all this extra skin along the edge. And you may even go down to see some of the fat that's there, uh, and that needs to be kind of, we call it remodeled, and make it look new. That's more of a cosmetic approach. And you can actually see this patient's tried a little surgery on their own, because they tried to slip, slip, slip it back here. So be careful. You don't want to do any, any home surgery. You should really have a professional see these. And uh, so for this one, I'd probably do an antibiotic too, maybe this one not. And then this last one here is a um, ingrown toenail. It's actually all swollen all around the whole area. Red, this would need an antibiotic. And for this, I would probably just remove the whole toenail. Removing the whole toenail uh, after you numb it up once again. And then all this kind of swelling will come down uh, with the antibiotic and then you can kind of remodel it if you need to. So that kind of explains to you. I just wanted to show you one other thing. This is what it looks like when you remove the little edge of the nail. So removing a little edge, that's one edge. Sometimes you need to remove both edges, um, and, and uh, sometimes you just remove the whole, the whole toenail, but that's what it kind of looks like after you do the procedure. Okay, let's go back here now. And look at the the actual, this is a little uh, agenda I made here to kind of explain what you do with all these six types. So type 1, it shows if you use anesthesia. So pretty much all of them use anesthesia. Some say yes or no, for example, on the second one and on this fourth one. It says yes or no because if, it, if you can just trim it back, you're fine, as long as you can clean it all out. But you may, may need anesthesia in there. And then here, how much of the nail? Uh, number three, you want to remove probably the whole thing because it's loosened as well. Probably the whole thing because it's loosened as well. Uh, antibiotic is really uh, a doctor choice. Uh, a lot of us, because uh, many doctors give a ton of antibiotics, so we try to put less and less antibiotics in people's systems now. 
but uh, the ones that look kind of angry, like this one here and this one here, and maybe even this one, you should probably do an antibiotic. And then removing the extra skin that we talked about. So remove a little extra skin here, a little extra skin here, maybe probably here. And I would wait until this comes down before you do any extra skin. Uh, sometimes patients need uh, something called a phenolization. Uh, this is where we, we actually uh, kill the nail root. So you actually remove the little edge of the nail, kill it, and we put um, a little phenol in there. That's what those cotton tip advocators are for. Uh, just to remind you, the nail matrix is right down here. Um, and uh, what you do is you put it kind of down into the edge and it kills it so it doesn't, doesn't go back at all. So it kind of looks like that afterwards, a little bit narrower. And if you actually remove it on the whole toenail, that's what it would look like on the whole toenail. Hope this found. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, uh, please visit drpelta.com and get a free access to the foot pain toolkit and diabetes toolkit. Uh, so what I'll do actually, I'll just show that to you. Here's a little portion of the blog you can see. Um, and uh, the most important thing for you is getting access to the foot pain toolkit and the diabetes toolkit. Um, once you open that up, let's say the foot pain one, you you can just kind of go to this page here. And in here, there's a lot of information on foot pain, patient presentations similar to the one that you just saw, uh, information on heel pain, bunions, middle of the foot pain, and different types of uh, issues that are going on. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please share it with other people.